Hello everyone. I've been asked by a couple of Tinker Studio buyers to describe a little bit more about how we put parts together uh, and more specifically uh, what is a DNA program and, and how does it work. So there are a couple of very critical parts that you need to have in a DNA program for E. coli bacteria because our ultimate goal is to create a circular piece of DNA that you put into E. coli, and then that program uses the cellular machinery uh, to run it and create things, okay? And so let's start here with the anchor part. And so there are a couple of important parts of the uh, anchor parts that are included in the kit and that are already attached to the magnetic beads. Uh, one very important thing is the uh, very, very start has a short segment of A's that uh, are able to bind to the cap. And we'll, we'll look at this a little bit deeper afterwards. So that's very important. The second really important thing is what's called a selection marker. And a selection marker is an antibiotic resistance gene that allows you to uh, select for your organism that you've created. And in the kit here, we have an ampicillin, chloramphenicol, and canamycin. And so when you're growing your bacteria on the LB agar plates, you need to make sure to add the appropriate antibiotic uh, to the agar uh, as you're creating it. And the point here is that when you put your DNA program into the bacteria, all of the bacteria aren't going to get the, the DNA in them. In fact, there's only gonna be a small number of them out of the whole batch. And you need to be able to only have your bacteria grow and all the rest of them die. And this is what allows you to do that. And then there's an a Z end or an X end at the end of uh, that part. Going all the way to the other end, so the very last part that you always have to add is called a cap. And the caps start with either X's or Z's. Uh, and they have what's called an origin of replication in them. And this is a short snippet of DNA, about 100 base pairs long, that tells the cell to copy the DNA plasmid that you're creating. And this is really important because remember, the cells are always dividing and dividing and dividing. And so if your DNA isn't being copied, then eventually your DNA will dilute out and you'll have cells that don't have your plasmid in them. Okay, and actually it'll be even, it'll be very difficult for them to even start growing because only one plasmid will go into each cell. And so you, if you don't have an origin of replication, you probably won't even see any bacteria grow. So it's very important to have this. And you'll notice that there are two different uh, origins. There's a dot one and a dot two. The dot one tells the cell to keep roughly 20 to 30 of your DNA programs in the cell at any given time. Whereas the dot two tells the cell to keep uh, an order of magnitude more, about two to 300 per cell, okay? So those are two very important parts. Now we get into the uh, genetic program or DNA program building. <clears throat> and we're just gonna build a, a pretty simple one here. And so the first regulatory element that you always need to include is called a promoter. And the promoter is critical because it tells the cell to transcribe the following DNA, the DNA after it, into RNA, okay? And there are a number of different promoters here. Uh, you've got a PR1234. These are called constitutive promoters, which tell the cell to continuously transcribe what's next to it. Then you'll see some promoters with an O and then uh, another designation, for example, OC1. And this O is called an operator, and it allows you to control that promoter with uh, another protein. And for example, the OC1 is a binding site for what's called the C1 repressor, okay? And so if you wanted to control this promoter, you, would, you could also express in a different program uh, the C1 repressor, and that would come over, bind to this, and prevent this promoter from working under certain conditions, okay? So the first thing you always need to add is a promoter, and I'm just going to go ahead and arbitrarily choose PR2. I'm going to choose a anchor to match that. So remember, the promoter tells the cell to transcribe the DNA next to it into RNA. 
The next part that you need, which is really important, is a ribosomal binding site. And this is a part that tells the cell to translate the RNA next to it into protein via the ribosome. Okay, and so I'm going to go ahead and just choose one of these. And similar to the promoter, they have different strengths. The lower the number means the, the weaker the transcription or translation. The larger the number means the stronger the transcription or translation. Okay, so if you want to tell the cell to express a lot of the protein or coding sequence that you're going to put next to it, you'll want to have a 4 and a 4. You want to just have a little bit, a 1 and a 1, and anywhere in between. Okay, and the last thing uh, for a simple circuit is to choose a coding sequence. And the coding sequence is the DNA that actually encodes for the protein you want the cell to create. And there's a lot of different protein coding sequences here that you can choose from. You've got uh, violacin pathways, uh, so this is the medical pathway to make violacin a purple compound uh, that has anti-parasitic and anti-cancer properties. You've got some of the repressors, which I mentioned, so this is the uh, TET-R repressor. Um, you've got red fluorescent protein. You've got proteins from the Lux operon. Those are the, the proteins that could make glowing bacteria. You've got insulin, you've got green fluorescent protein, blue chromoprotein, which is uh, a blue pigment from coral. You've got, this is another repressor. Uh, you've got uh, BSMT1, which uh, allows you to make the banana smell, and uh, ATF1, which allows you to make the uh, mint smell. So a lot of different things here. We're gonna go with the simplest, which I recommend you start off the get-go. Uh, just make a, some blue bacteria, and there you go. So you've got a promoter, you've got the ribosomal binding site, which is what will cause translation of what's uh, next to it into protein, okay? And one of the last things you can add, which uh, always helps, is called a terminator. And a terminator is a short piece of DNA that tells the cell to stop transcribing the DNA into RNA. And it actually helps to boot the, the RNA polymerase off the DNA. And this prevents leakiness. This uh, helps you to control and maintain uh, kind of an insulated uh, program uh, here and prevents some of the machinery from running past into the, uh, any adjacent programs or into the uh, other sections. Uh, here and so we're just going to go ahead and add that. This is optional, so you don't have to add this, um, but uh, you can go ahead and, if you want to. And, and there we go, that's a uh, complete circuit uh, that will make the bacteria blue in color uh, when you grow it on a chloramphenicol containing agar plate. And so now I can click assemble circuit and we're going to see the full circuit created and so we can see here if we click back this is uh, here's the anchor then we've got our promoter which is right here we've got our RBS and then we've got our coding sequence for the blue chromoprotein and uh, then we can jump into the origin of replication and the cap and I mentioned at the beginning that the anchor has a string of A's at the very beginning and they're very important because when you elute your DNA from the magnetic beads using a Lucian buffer, this makes these A's free in solution to bind to the very last bit of the cap uh, which is a string of T's and this is what causes your DNA program to circularize and uh, circularization is key for uh, DNA replication. So uh, that's uh, building a, a circuit 101. If you want to build a more complex circuit, uh, we'll call it a level 2 circuit, you can create what's called an operon. And the way you can do that is to uh, use a single promoter followed by an RBS and a coding sequence. Uh, and then you can add another RBS and another coding sequence, for example, GFP.
after it, okay? And under the control of a single promoter, you can express multiple coding sequences. Uh, and so it's very important to always have an RBS in front of a coding sequence, but you can use a single promoter for it, okay? That's called an operon. And if you wanted to do um, an even more complex circuit, what you can do is you can use an operator, as I mentioned. So we're gonna, uh, actually, sorry, we're gonna get rid of that one here. We're gonna find the, the promoter under the control of the lack I. So we're gonna put this promoter in here and get rid of this. And this promoter uh, has the operator site for LAC I in it. In the absence of IPTG, the chemical, the LAC repressor will bind to the, this operator and prevent the promoter from working. Okay. When you add IPTG, it causes the LAC I repressor to fall off and therefore the promoter can work. Okay, so this is some of the fun stuff you can do uh, after you've created. So, uh, and then what you can do is, so now that we've got the uh, LAC operator here, and we've got a ribosomal binding site, uh, CP, uh, what you can do is uh, we could get rid of, we could put the terminator at the end of this. So we're gonna finish that circuit Okay, that's going to insulate it. We could have a, another promoter, which is always on. Okay, and then an RBS of, uh, we'll say, high strength. And then we're going to get rid of this, and we're going to put the where is it? coding sequence for the LAC. We're going to put LAC I here. Okay. And I'm just going to keep it like this here. Let's do a, an or two. Okay, so now let's go through this one here. So we've got a promoter with an operator site for LAC I. And LAC I is a protein that, if present in the cell, will come and bind here and prevent the promoter uh, from working. It'll prevent the RNA polymerase uh, structure from initiating and uh, going through and transcribing. Okay, and so under that promoter, we've got uh, we're controlling the the expression of a blue chroma protein. Okay. So we've got the RBS, which will uh, enable translation of blue chromoprotein. Now, and then we've got a terminator to insulate this program. Next, we've got another circuit which has a promoter of pretty high strength. We've got an RBS of high strength, and we've got the LAC I. So we've got the LAC repressor here, and this is the protein that binds to this operator. And so right now, this is always being created, which means it's always going to be binding and preventing this from working. Okay, but remember that this lac I only binds to this operator uh, in the absence of a chemical called IPTG. And within your Tinker Studio, you should see some IPTG, which you can add to your plates or you can spray onto the bacteria. Or if you're growing in liquid culture, you can add to the uh, culture after it's been growing for a while, and you'll be able to witness the uh, repressor coming off and the expression of the blue chroma protein happening. And so the bacteria, only after you add the IPTG, will start to turn blue. All right. And so in this case, we're going to say... This is IPTG inducible blue chroma, chroma protein. Done.
done. All right, enjoy.